Welcome to the Common Humanity Podcast, where we're here to have real human conversations. Today, I am joined by Christopher. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Christopher at work, working at a local music venue. We were doing security. Um, he was so bold to ask if I was interested in fitness, and then I nerded out over fitness for like two hours on him. Um, that is how we met. So, other than that, Christopher, who are you? So, I am without all of the labels, I like to just think of myself as human. Um, in my professional and purposeful life, I have goals that I'm working on. Um, currently, I work at a pizza place as a manager. Um, I have some things that I want to do, so I'm not sure if that's really who I can say that I am because I'm actively working towards, but my biggest passion is yoga and that's kind of where I want to be. Um, and I think that really I'm, I'm myself. There is no other person that you could be. I like that. So what... I know that yoga is a huge, huge part of your life. What brought you to yoga? Initially, it was to kind of open up, get some flexibility in my body. I used to be like a stick, completely immobile. Um, it was the physical aspects of it. Um, and it initially was once a month and I found that the practices I was doing at the time were super short, but it was kind of the, for the first time in a long time that I could ground and find a place where things were calm and still and give myself time that I really wasn't getting anywhere else in life or giving myself. And that blossomed over time into a lot of other things, but it started aligning with goals and like my inner voice or intuition that a lot of the things I was avoiding in life from a lot of the trauma I had been carrying were being highlighted. And it kept me coming back. The physical aspect was mainly the big lesson for quite some time. I would say probably two to three years. But through that continuing to show up, I found a completely new and renewed sense of self. And an area of life where no matter what else is going on that I can always come back to home base. One of the things you said in there that struck a chord with me was um, the idea of giving yourself time. And you said that it was a way that you were able to give yourself the time that you needed, that you essentially were not giving yourself before can you speak a little bit more to that yeah um i am generally kind of a very much a doer i occupy my time with just go 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 grind or always little bits of cleaning moving not necessarily in a athletic way um, and a lot of it becomes just filling up time. So yoga was a place where 
I can sit or move into being. Um, and I think that it's coming into a time where it's being present. There's not a lot of worry of the past or the future. That it's kind of being within my body, not being outwardly in the world, not having to show for anything else, no. Um, extra worries or opinions. And I just get a focus on moving my body, opening it up, being in my heart, not having my mind and my brain interrupt and learning to smile more. Um, is there a particular modality of yoga that you like more than others? Yeah, so generally I tend to focus on, on what would kind of be Ashtanga yoga, so very posturally orientated. But in America, we call it power yoga. So lots of flow. Um, or I guess it would be power yoga would be like vinyasa. I like a good balance of super strong, but very movement, like continually paced. Um, I think that that is my favorite way to ground myself, yet get out of all the brain distraction and just be in my body, how it's moving, the posture, be in my breath, and really focus on intertwining those two things to like set myself up for the best rest of the day that I can have. And even for me, like on the other end of the day, that that can be the best kind of wind down too. I really think that that's my favorite way to show up for the world is by doing this for myself and then I can be of service for everything else. I think there's a lot of power in that statement because there's the, the saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. And I think a lot of times in our society, we, um, we have, we have both seen our fair share of grind culture, right? And we are pushed from, an, from outward forces to go and go and go and go and go. And it makes the idea of taking time for yourself almost rebellious because um to say no this is my time and you don't get like nobody gets to interrupt my time this is what I do for me to keep me sane to keep me happy to keep me smiling and to keep me being the best version of myself for everyone in the world around me I think that's a very powerful thing um, are there any other ways outside of yoga that you do that for yourself? Yes. I mean, nothing has quite the impact on my life as yoga does, but I'm learning just, so for me, yoga touches into everything that I do and that's what yoga truly is. But the practices that I learn on the mat is a large part of it is really taking it off the mat and interacting with the world in a way that you would while on the mat um i've just recently started a new job so and it's a company that i worked for in the past so there's new but there's a lot of what i've been through in the past and 
gradually I'm finding my way at a new point in life. So I've just recently turned 30 and I kind of feel like I'm entering a new chapter. And it, for me, is there's a renewed vision for my future and the steps that it's going to take me to achieve that. So going to my job um, is becoming something that I'm proud of. Um, I also journal quite a lot. I'm also in the weight room. I have a pretty good support system with that. Um, you are a wonderful coach. So um, I play video games quite often. Spend a lot of time doing that. Um, for me, that's more of a decompression thing. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, of course, yours. I think I am three quarters through your library. Um, I like reading. That's something I haven't been quite doing enough. Um, I spend quite a lot of time with my dogs. And then enjoying what glimpses of a nice weather we have outside, although it's been quite rainy lately and when I'm not work or doing other things. Um, I really do enjoy cleaning. I think it's a very meditative thing for me. I like having everything in order. So I'm always tidying up my space, my vehicle and things around the house. Um, a lot of it is staying productive though. So on the other end is it's hard for me to stay still, but the times where I just stay still, just rest, not even sleeping, become kind of like a wellspring of peace and relaxation. Um, sorry to take it back into yoga, but you said something earlier <laughs> how <laughs> yoga, well, so I just got done with a practice and in it, he stated that yogis are the original rebels. And because they ask why a lot to everything and taking that kind of time for yourself in the day is an act of rebellion in the culture and the society we live in. We're kind of taught to not sit still. If you're not moving, then you're not being productive. And productivity is kind of force fed is what our means to the end should be is that you have to achieve and give back in that sense. Well, then Ooh, that taps I... into the, you can't fill from an empty cup. Yeah. And that has been one of my deepest lessons is that I was raised to fill and fill and I never found a sense of who I even was in this world until I filled my own cup. Um, kind of coupling some of those things together, you talked about how like we're encouraged to move, but so not all movement is productive, right? Like if you're just pacing back and forth, you're not really getting much done other than digging a root in the ground a rut in the ground. Blah. Um, and there's a lot of times I know in, in my past life, <laughs> my previous versions of this life, um, like me now, you obviously know, but I have a lot going on, right? There's, I, I'm a very busy person because I have a lot of interests and I have a lot of things that I give my time to. But it's different now than me five years ago when I was busy and I was constantly moving, but not always progressing. 
not all like not everything and like now there are still things that I do that aren't necessarily moving me forward but I'm a firm believer that there are times to move forward and there are times to stand still and kind of enjoy the view where you're at um and even times to take a step back and gain some new perspective uh because life's a dance you learn as you go sometimes you lead sometimes you follow anyway <laughs> it's a country song um but i think like from what you said it like what really hit me with that is the idea that we are like we're told that we have to keep going keep going keep going but that act of rebellion of slowing down and whether it's yoga or weightlifting or reading a book like there's so many things that it can be that can be the thing that you do to spend time with yourself and figure out who you are and what you want but that is an act of rebellion because it's taking back your time and that is like to me that was the thing that it was like the first step of like seeing into a new world like peeking behind behind the veil and going oh i don't have to be on like this little mouse wheel just running constantly because i was told to i have the power to step off that wheel and go explore other things and it's taken that time to sit with myself and I mean, I feel like I've talked about it enough times on here, but my go-to is lifting heavy shit. Um, <laughs> I've, I've always told people, so my, my three main forms of meditation are lifting weights, swimming, and yoga because I prefer moving meditation, though I have gotten better at quiet meditation, usually in a sauna when I have the ability to be forced to focus on my breathing. Um, the ability to be forced. <laughs> forced. I, sometimes that's what it takes because my brain will generally always find something else to do. But if I set that time aside and say, this, this is where I go to meditate. This is where I go to be with myself and do the things I need to do. Then I'm better at actually achieving it. Whereas if I'm like, oh, well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go, like, go sit and meditate for a minute. It's like, I'm a schedule person. <laughs> I have to schedule it in and say, this is, this is my time. Um, but I don't know. I just think it's really important to find whatever your thing is that gives you a little bit of yourself back, you know? Yeah. A few things there. So like, I think I live a lot more less structured. Now I have quite a lot of structure maybe for your average person, but comparatively to yours like I am not jotting down time blocks throughout my entire day it's like I have a set amount of things that I need to get done and then I'll fit them in where I find the time but I think that having those moments where like okay I'm going to be mindful at this time in the sun the more you build that and practice that routine outside of that you can call upon that way of being mm -hmm. and i think it's so hard for us because most people that is the most foreign thing is to just be and one of my favorite quotes is we're human beings not human doings we do we have to do because we live in a world where everything is interconnected within each other the world moves but you have it i think a huge part of it plays into the the mindfulness and presence you bring to everything 
So then that's the difference between just going through your day lackadaisically and uh, like stressed and just not feeling worrisome or not feeling the kinds of like happiness or joy in any of your activities and you're just doing things to just get them done and have, bringing mindfulness to what you're doing in any way creates that kind of like looking into that veil and so that's why initially yoga was just the place for me to show up and move my body a little bit but it became a whole new scope of how to live my life and i think more the the posture and the asana so the movement of it all was to just open my body to let my brain learn how to start to actually be where i'm at um not necessarily where I'm not necessarily where I want to be in life. But yoga every day shows me that I don't let up. I am here. And I show up every day to keep growing. And I had come from a place in my past where things were either in super decline or at least stagnant. And it got me sober. Um, I don't often say it, but and it's kind of a... Something I don't like to view myself as, but... I am a recovering addict and there's a lot of tendencies that I always had had that were degrading of who I am in this world and how I treated myself and how I treated everyone else around me. And it isn't easy, but it's true. And a lot of practices of betterment and self-improvement that I've like undertaken, it's in the continuously showing up that it doesn't happen overnight, but looking back on everything that I am not where I used to be. And actually my trajectory is a lot brighter and higher than I ever could have visualized or even imagined oh we're gonna we're gonna do something fun <laughs> um for a moment and take take a few breaths to think about it but if you could paint your ideal future like I don't care. You can you can choose the time frame of what you're looking at. Um but if you have a vision in your head of like what you want your life to look like, what does it look like? Luckily, this new series I just started today was very interesting and I already had to tap into these same imaginative states. So this is easy to answer at the moment uh had to envision that i was flying and it didn't matter what i was flying through so i had a lot of different imagery uh one was shortly and like briefly was just being in the sky and then kind of outer space and then the teacher mentioned water well, then after all of his suggestions, these were fleeting uh, imagination-wise. Uh, I imagined myself in a yoga studio. And I was just kind of like flowing through a group of people. And then I had a lot of thoughts that 
I want to be able to truly impact people on how much they love themselves, so who they view themselves as in this world and their bodies. So I want to own my own yoga studio. Um, I also have kind of a dream to create like a men's rite of passage in our community. I don't really see anything like that in Cheyenne. I mean, there's clubs and groups and sports, but those are kind of mainstream ways, I think. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of want to create something that's a bit more holistic. With that, I would want quite a bit of land and some kind of facility that can facilitate that. Um, and hopefully there would be a lot of plant life, vegetation, um, nature, very intertwined with this home and I have hopes of foundating first off myself, my family, intermediate and my relationship and really showing up for like in that order and then reaching out through my community and somewhat being a community leader of sort, somebody that especially young men can look up to. And this used to be, I feel like I've always had these kinds of goals and dreams, but in a way it used to be very much, it was in some jaded places or just it wasn't clearly hashed out or there was a lot of like pride or envy of like anything I would see on TV or just past experiences that kind of tainted like how I envisioned myself in the future. And now this is coming from a place where I've done a lot of heavy healing work and I truly want to be able to help other members of my community not have to go through those same trials that I had. So you say like a rite of passage. What, what do you think it is that men need to tap into? that that is I not think, being provided by those other forms of groups and clubs and things i know i've heard a lot of your male guests kind of touch on this i think a huge one is vulnerability um their emotions um and then i think that extends to even the the more accepted emotions that are supposed to be represented by men is like you got to be well you should be happy but i think that that image is kind of painted in the picket fence way mm -hmm. like or it's more of an image than it's actually pervaded by most young men but for me i think vulnerability is huge it's wearing your scars. It's letting your chest shine, letting your heart shine, letting your voice speak. Most of the time, 
when you're not really showing up for as a male when I'm not showing up with who I want to be or who I should be being a shrivel <laughs> I get nodded I get depressed I feel weak I start becoming very negative everything else looking forward is bleak through the practice of like vulnerability speaking my truth in the times where fear is just kind of looming over everything i realized that that fear wasn't as real as all the habitual ways or even patterns of like my brain or outside influences had shown it to be so through facing that fear comes tremendous growth and i think that that's something that most young men aren't really told to go through and it's kind of like we're taught to just be complacent and just do enough to get by to provide for some like corporatized world that things seem to somewhat be turning into i agree um a lot of times and i've had this conversation with many many people um because and it, as you know because we've had this conversation before um there's like there's a lot of people who argue that this is a male problem or this is a female problem um and i've for a long time been sitting over here thinking well this is a human problem and yes we all have things that we share because and i say this because i've had like i had a similar upbringing where it was inappropriate it was unacceptable for me to show really any emotion but anger was the only acceptable emotion in my household um and anything else we were expected to keep to ourselves and not burden anybody else with. I think one of the big differences that that I see in men versus women is that women are more likely and more encouraged to find a support system and they usually do so much sooner than men do. And so they're able to unpack all of this stuff a little bit sooner because we because we talk more generally. Women women generally talk more than men. Um scientifically. Um but I think having like providing a space for men to commune together and just be who they are I think would just open up the opportunities for men to form you almost said alliances <laughs> to form an alliance um but to form that connection that a lot of women have I mean a, women go through a lot of things that push them towards connection with others um motherhood is one of them it there are women who who don't find connection in motherhood and get very isolated and it's very dangerous but like there are there are like play groups that you can get into and 
like workout groups designated for young moms and things like that. So society has things that are built in for women to come together and having those things for men is still relatively new. So I don't think that it's the, that the problems are inherently male or female, but the solutions have not been distributed equitably amongst the genders. Um, so it makes me happy that that's something you're looking to change because also being in Wyoming, we are one of the last places to change when it comes to anything, whether it's social norms or um, how like statistics run with certain generations and things like that. Like we're, we're usually behind the curb on things. <laughs> And it makes me happy that there is this potential to bring this to our state because I think there are a lot of people, not, not think, I know there are a lot of people who are in need and, and in of want of that, for, that type of community but they need someone to lead the way. Like they need someone to to charge forward and be like, all right, we're gonna break down some of these walls. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Cause breaking down walls is fun, both physically and mentally. If you don't believe me, you can ask my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having too much fun right now. Um, what do you think, I know I've asked you this in other conversations, but I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you think is the next smallest step for you to take to reach that, that dream future? Um, it's getting my 200 hour yoga certification. I have a hard time sitting down with learning. I can move my body all day long in the ways we've spoken on, but for me to learn is something that I've kind of gotten out of touch with. And teaching classes, um, learning how to be more of a public speaker I really, it, I think it it's going through a period of uh, being receptive to learning again. I have an associate's degree. I did online college and it was a rocky road. I had more plans for that degree than I ended up ending with, but I'm not, I'm happy with what I achieved. Since I underwent that, um I've not had an easy time allowing my uh horizons to expand and learn new things. I would disagree with that based on uh I have known you for hold on, let me look at this poster. Almost a year. Almost a year. It's and... just not been easy. I just say nothing. It's never easy. <laughs> so, one thing traditionally, uh, men's rights of passage groups and finding brotherhood is not new. Within American society, it is very uh, almost taboo because okay. we're taught to just. You just got to man up. You got to be stoic and super within solidarity within yourself. You hold it all in and you just burden the weight of everything. 
it's not to say that those can't be strengths of a man, but that should not be solely relied on just you and yourself. We are completely communal creatures. We live within, it is a, a village of a child. <laughs> yeah, we really are. <laughs> We are, we're back animals. But it's like what we're being taught within society is trying to just say, go more, stay within the grain and do it all by yourself, but how it's taught. Can I tell a story real quick? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> I was after ask permission. Okay. Um, so on the topic of us being pack animals, right? Um, I don't remember who told me this story or if it was in a yoga practice. I don't think it was in a yoga practice. It's too gruesome for that. Um but there so there was a mother orangutan with a new baby and the a jaguar came after them right and there was this was on like a video i think my mom was telling me about it that they like watch this i don't know anyway so there's this mo mother orangutan and her newborn baby and a jaguar is trying to eat the baby right and the mom was like oh no you didn't and so she's fighting off the jaguar and putting up a pretty good fight because orangutans are not um sissy little creatures they're badass but eventually this mother knows like okay i'm not like the the jaguar gets a hold of her throat and she's like okay i'm done for but i have to protect my baby and she lets out a wail and then you just hear a i don't remember what it's called but whatever a group of orangutans is called and you just hear them coming through the trees and the jaguar is about to get the baby and the orangutans jump on the jaguar and literally rip it to shreds and then literally literally there's no jaguar left afterwards <laughs> and then one of them picks up the baby and they move on with their lives because they are pack animals and we are also pack animals and that's how like whether you believe in evolution or not, like those are the kinds of creatures that we originally came from. We were built to work as a group to make the group succeed. And however our big brains have turned against us in that way, we've decided we can do things better on our own. And whether that's handling our emotions or starting a business or whatever it may be, like somehow we got this this thought in our head that we're individuals and yes there are i'm a very individual person <laughs> and we are individuals but we are individuals within a greater whole and anyone who has had a successful business will tell you that you don't get there by yourself. You have mentors, you have friends, you have people who supported you. You had people who told you that you were worth it on days you didn't feel like you were. And I think the more we come back to that and realize that we're all in this together, I feel like that is a terrible song from a Disney movie. Anyway. <laughs> what? That's your forte. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's from High School Musical, which as a note, I have never seen. But I feel like that's a thing. Anyway. Um, Current Zac Efron's better than High School Musical. Zac Efron. <laughs> He's definitely grown as a human being since then. Um, so I want to share this this quote from this brilliant person and the brilliant person is me from three years ago. This came up on my Facebook stories yes, or Facebook memories yesterday. And I apparently three years ago said, you can change your life however you want to. All it takes is a tremendous amount of effort. <laughs> and I think that- That's all, that's all. <laughs> that's all, <laughs> that's all. Just like, that's 
a little bit, but I think that that is, um, I think that plays in a little bit to the conversation we've been having is that like, yes, all, all of the things you see in your future are, are 100% possible, but it's those little steps, right? It's those, the, the baby steps and it's the, the willingness to be knocked down and pull yourself back up. Um, and I think that's one of the things that makes being a human so exciting is that on the one hand, you know pretty much exactly what's going to happen, but on the other hand, you don't know how it's going to happen. Like, you know that at some point in your life, you're going to eat shit again, <laughs> but you don't know what thing you're going to eat shit over because like, that's not going to, but you also know that you're going to come out on the other side but you also don't know how you're going to get there. It's really exciting to like know the future, but not know the future all at the same time. And that is a dance. It is a dance. And Just I like ask to, Garth Brooks. I like to kinesthetically move. So moving my body, but with emotion. Emotions are hard for me. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. Again, talk to my therapist. Okay, so we are officially at the point of getting to our game. So you get to answer the questions first. If you started a charity, what would it be for and what would be its goal? Hmm. think this is, this is one of two things it would be either for use um in poverty but truly i think i would really like to have like a charity that was for um wildlife and not just animals but like nature reserves and areas that are impacted by natural disasters and human imprints so things like deforestation and I sometimes don't feel like I spend enough time in nature but it's within our nature and Sometimes it seems bleak at the rate the world is moving away to turn everything into concrete, concrete. and plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I would love to start a charity that had to deal with giving back to wildlife and nature. I think that'd be cool. Um, I think especially here i would want to start a charity that is based off of the idea of food insecurity um but not in just like hey we're going to get food from ships to us from colorado and give it back to people which is great is it it's a great thing to keep people fed because one of the things that bothers me a about our community but more so about people's perception or knowledge of our community is that so like in Cheyenne more than 50 percent of the kids in our school districts are on free and reduced lunch which means that they are at least somewhat food insecure um and I would want to start a charity that is based on the idea of a community garden where people can come in and learn to grow their own food um and they can put in because a lot of times people don't have a yard where they can grow their own garden um they don't have the space or they we don't have great soil here but if we built um, an organization and like just a massive greenhouse where 
kids and their families can come in and they have their own little plot, right? And they can grow whatever they want to. Like if they love cucumbers, they can just grow cucumbers. And we have, we have master gardeners in town. We have people who know how to grow things in Wyoming and bringing them in and having them teach people how to successfully grow themselves some food and then let them take that food home with them and teach them that there are different foods that grow in different seasons. Because especially if you have a greenhouse, even in Wyoming, even when it's 30 below, like there are things that grow. Do you have to learn to like radishes or other root vegetables? Yes, <laughs> but there are things that grow and giving that that education to people so that they can supplement, not just because one of the things about being food insecure is a lot of times the food that they can afford is less nutritious. And if they can become less dependent on having to buy produce that is marked up at a grocery store, but it can instead be given the opportunity to grow that for themselves, then they can get the nutrients that they need, which will help them be healthier people in general, which will help them be more successful and find things and it'll just be great. <laughs> so just give me a moment while I jot this down on my to-do list <laughs> because apparently I got the bug now. Um, yeah, so that's the charity I'm apparently going to be starting in the next couple of weeks. I need to finish building my gardens first. Anyway, um, okay, question two. <laughs> Do you think today's generation has it harder or easier than us? Explain. I don't like to full on like... I think... Things change always but i don't really think that there was necessarily like an easy way to this is easier now than it has ever been well yes maybe there's certain technologies that make our lives easier but i think humans have always struggled like and that's part of evolution and um, our ability to adapt so the tiger that's chasing us changes. We evolve, but so does the world around us. So yeah. I don't like to just easily paint it black and white. Like I have it easier than my great grandparents did. I think there was just different battles that were faced. I agree completely. Um, I would answer this by saying both. They have some things easier, they have some things harder. One of the things that I'm both bitter and happy for, so I guess bittersweet, is like my younger brother has had an easier go at life than I did growing up. And there's a part of me, it's just like, it's not fair, you didn't have to have the same trials as me. But at the same time, knowing that that was the goal. The goal is for my children to not have to have as much burden as I had. And they have their own burdens. But um, one way I think that it's easier is that we are getting better at talking about mental health. And we are getting better at having empathy and vulnerability and being human and getting back to those things. Um, and I think that the emotional intelligence in the upcoming generation is going to be much higher than we have it. Um, and I think that's going to give them the opportunity to solve problems, interpersonal problems, especially much better than we have. Um, they have it harder because like day by day, we're getting more and more like questionable of like how long is the earth going to be 
uh, a place where humans can actually live. Um, so there's that hardship that they have to go through that even if I don't have to live through the entirety of it, there's less of it that I have to live through. Um, so there, there's an ebb and flow. Plus they have like, they have technology, which is a blessing and a giant curse of, I mean, I, I have to sometimes force my kids outside to play and it wasn't even a thought when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I just enjoyed the world around me and experienced it. And they don't have that because they have entertainment and they have screens and they have access to things that are not tactile so much of the time, whether it's at school or at home or whatever. And it's not to say those things are villainous. Like I used to be very against video games. Like just, I hated them. Um, and now I understand that there's a time and place for them as entertainment, as even education, as a social aspect now that you can play with people online and interact and do all of that. Um, but also the understanding that it is not the only thing in the world, which is my job as a parent to remind my children that there's grass outside and they should touch it sometimes. <laughs> there's a huge balance in the technological world and the natural world. That your average corporate job working person is straying more into the new tech side than yeah need to go outside and touch grass <laughs> and real grass not turf doesn't count if it's turf because that's just plastic real grass we can only um, synthetically replicate so much and fool ourselves into believing that it's That just reminded me of the Lorax. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Last question. What person or people have influenced your life the most and how? People would be my family. That is a very tumultuous ship, but that is the community that raised me and delivered me so many aspects of my personality and who I am in this world. And then I think my most impactful whole person would be my yoga teacher through my yoga subscription service. So interdimension television um, and the gentleman who runs the company, his name is Travis Elliott. Um, the wisdom bestowed through the multitude of practices that I've done over the last almost five years through him are, it's almost like as if he could be a father figure to me um just today it was said that the word guru means the one that dispels the light so a teacher is only meant to show you the way and i'm grateful that i had found somebody that can show me day in day out who i am and they aren't holding up a picture saying this is you but they are sh opening every door that you find that picture of this is you and I think that that gentleman I have never met him in person so then there's kind of a 
bid for a little like the good sides of technology but mm -hmm. i don't i wouldn't be who i am without his teachings and the practices through his service um for me my the people who have influenced me the most are my children um they are phenomenal young men i don't want to call them young men because they're still in their single digits but they're very tall and very intelligent and keep me on my toes and call me out on my bullshit um and i learn a lot from them and I've had to grow a lot for them. And if they, if they had not come into my life, I would be an immensely different person. And I don't know if I would have survived. So they have they have made me me. And no matter how much they frustrate me, they're the coolest. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Um, before we sign off, is there anything, there's one thing that you want the world to know, to take away? What is it? that voice that's resonating from your heart follow it and that that voice is your voice do that thing face that fear and that dream that you may have strayed from is possible Thank you for joining me on the Common Humanity Podcast, where we're here to have real human conversations. <laughs>